During this economic collapse, we have seen people lose their businesses, their jobs, and even their life savings. In fact, since the collapse started just a few weeks ago, searches for unemployment applications on Google have increased by roughly 4,700%. And just last week alone, 6.65 million people in the United States filed for unemployment. That's about 2% of the United States' entire population filing for unemployment in one week. And to put that in perspective, only about 155 million people are in the workforce in the United States, meaning that last week alone will hike the unemployment rate by about 4.2%. This means that we have likely already surpassed the unemployment levels of the worst parts of the 2008 financial crisis. Yet, despite all of this doom and gloom, there have been some people that have been able to take advantage of this situation. In fact, many millionaires, multimillionaires, and and even billionaires might be being created right in front of our very eyes. So who are these people? And could you do anything right now to help bolster your financial future? Well, let's start off by asking ourselves, why do some businesses go through a boom during a crisis? A perfect example of this is actually McDonald's during the financial crisis of 2008. You see, during those years of 2008 and 2009, as businesses were collapsing, unemployment was nearing 10%, and millions of people were losing their jobs, McDonald's actually saw an increase in revenue and profits by about 4.5% per year. So why did this happen? Well, think about it. When millions of people have their incomes drastically reduced, they look for ways to cut costs in order to survive, one of which is food. And in 2008, McDonald's had a pretty long list of items on its dollar menu, meaning that it was cheaper in many cases for a family to go and buy food from McDonald's for just a few dollars than it was to get fresh food from a grocery store. And this is just one example of a business that was in the right place at the right time that took advantage of a recession. But today is a completely different economy than it was 12 years ago. In 2008, only about 22% of the world was regularly on the internet. Meanwhile, about 60% of the people today in the world are regularly on the internet. And this giant shift towards the internet has led to an explosion of online industries like e-commerce and social media. And that brings us to the first business that has been going through a boom recently. And that is the business of online content creators. Because of the global lockdowns, more people are being forced to stay home and try to entertain themselves. So, many of these people are turning to platforms like Netflix, Disney+, YouTube, and other streaming services in order to kill the time. And the results so far have been staggering. A recent Nielsen report showed that streaming on these platforms has spiked by over 22% since the lockdowns were implemented. And that's one of the reasons why content creators like myself and many other influencers have actually seen substantial increases in viewership, subscriber counts, and revenue during this time, as opposed to many other businesses that are seeing decreases across the board. Actually, there are some genres of online content creation that are seeing 50%, 100%, or even up to 500% increases in revenue since the lockdowns. And YouTube has said that those videos are the ones that usually come in the genres of home meditation, cooking, home workouts, and DIY videos. So this is largely content that is relating to things that people can do at home. And depending on the creator, this might mean an extra few hundred dollars a month to tens of thousands of dollars in additional revenue per month. And out of all of the industries that I mentioned in this video, I can guarantee you that this crisis will create more wealth in the social media space than it will for most other industries. And what's crazy is that there has been such an influx of online viewership that the largest online video companies like Amazon, YouTube, Netflix, and Disney have all agreed to reduce the bit rates on their platforms in order to make sure that their websites and applications don't slow down or crash. Now, another industry that has seen a massive boom in recent weeks is the gaming industry. Similar to why online video content is taking off, people are at home a lot more now and looking for ways to entertain themselves. So what better way to do that than to dive into a video game? 
Recently, Verizon CEO Hans Vestberg made a statement saying that gaming traffic across the Verizon network has increased by roughly 75% in the last three weeks. So just over the last three weeks, this crisis has single-handedly launched the careers of many smaller indie game studios. And we've seen this on places like Steam. Steam, which is arguably the largest video game marketplace on the internet, has smashed its single-day user record twice in the past three weeks alone. Before the pandemic, Steam's all-time user record was a hefty 18.8 million users. Then, on March 15th, they set a new record of 20.3 million users, and just recently they cracked 23.8 million users. So right now, there are millions of more gamers on this one single marketplace that are buying and downloading more games than there were just four weeks ago. This spike in popularity of video games has caused other companies to also ride the wave of esports and video games during this crisis as well. For example, ESPN has recently made a massive shift towards airing esports content. For example, they announced that they will begin airing a live broadcast where NBA players will be competing in a live NBA 2K20 tournament where the grand prize will be $100,000. And this won't be airing on ESPN 6 or 7. This will be airing on ESPN and ESPN2 at the primetime 7pm slot which is usually reserved for the biggest sporting event of the night. What a crazy time we're living in. Now, as you might have heard from my previous videos, one of the hardest hit industries by this crisis has been the restaurant industry. This is due to the fact that even though many restaurants still remain open, they can no longer have people sit in their restaurant because it is considered too large of a public gathering. So many restaurants have had to adapt to this crisis by using a delivery service. And this is a smart idea because just by looking at Google Trends, you can see that the term delivery has seen an unprecedented spike over the last few weeks, while the term restaurant has seen a massive collapse. In fact, the delivery business has seen such a spike that delivery companies are amongst the only companies in the world that are looking to hire more employees right now and expand. Some examples of this are Instacart, who is looking to hire 300,000 drivers over the next three months. There's also pizza companies like Pizza Hut and Papa John's, who are looking to hire tens of thousands of delivery drivers. And of course, there is Amazon who is looking to hire 100,000 warehouse workers and drivers over the next several months. Now, as I was doing research for this video, I was looking over what these industries, like social media, gaming, and delivery, all have in common. One of which is that these are just by chance the industries that I have been heavily involved in over the last four years, as many of you longtime subscribers may have noticed. So times have luckily been pretty good for me recently, which is a weird feeling considering that I personally know so many people that are struggling right Right now. But another thing is that all of these industries are all internet based industries that have been growing at a rate of at least 25% per year over the last decade, even before this pandemic started. And that is why what I believe that this crisis is really doing is speeding up the Amazonification of the economy. What I mean by that is that even when life returns back to normal, there will still likely be a giant chunk of the population who will never go back to retail stores. They will only be ordering delivery from now on, and will be watching more online video content and playing more video games than before. And what this means is unfortunately, many brick and mortar business owners will be hurting a lot even after the lockdowns are lifted. But it also gives an opportunity for many aspiring business owners to start making money in the new economy. Currently, there are over 20,000 third-party sellers that make over $1 million per year on Amazon alone. And right now, many new third-party sellers are joining that $1 million revenue mark thanks to the increase in online shopping due to the pandemic. And I'm not talking about the sellers who are price gouging and selling hand sanitizer for $100 a bottle. I'm talking about those who are selling DIY tools or bidets or eBooks or some other item that people want to order online during the lockdowns. But there is a more common way that millionaires will be created from this pandemic. You see, another demographic of people who might build an empire from this crisis are those who have a little bit of cash in the bank and are willing to go big during the crisis. In 2008, during the bottom of the financial crisis, if you invested $10,000 in a generic ETF, then over the next 10 years, you would have seen your investment multiply by about four times its original value up 
until the start of 2020, meaning that your $10,000 investment would have been worth roughly $40,000 if you kept that investment for just 12 years. Now imagine if you invested something much larger, like $100,000. That would have potentially turned into $400,000 and would have earned you on average $25,000 per year from this one investment alone. And yes, I understand that most people do not have $100,000 to invest right now, I get it. However, there are some upper middle class millennials out there that have been saving for years and might start investing in the stock market during this crisis right now. And I'm not saying that right now is the right time to invest in the stock market. That is for you guys to decide. But what I am saying is that during times of crisis, those that have a little bit of money saved up all of a sudden have a golden opportunity to invest their money at a massive discount. So they will likely get a significant return on investment that might take them from middle class to the millionaire class over the next decade or two. And the stock market is not the only place where millionaire investors will be made. You see, with tens of millions of people losing their jobs, many of those are unfortunately also homeowners, some of whom will no longer be able to pay their mortgage any longer because they don't have a major source of income anymore. And we are already seeing evidence of this as some lenders have reported six to seven times their normal customer service call volumes. And some mortgage companies like Caliber Home Loans are preparing for a mortgage crisis that could be 40 to 50% worse than the 2008 crisis. And keep in mind, the average home price decreased by 20% during the financial crisis, with many areas seeing 30 to 40% decreases in value, especially places with a lot of foreclosures. Closures. So some people at the time with reserve cash, a down payment, and a relatively stable income were able to purchase real estate at an extreme discount. And a lot of these people were just purchasing properties for themselves to live in, which just by chance ended up turning into a good investment for them because home prices have increased by roughly 55% since the 2008 crash. And in some locations like my hometown of Oakville, Ontario, we have seen an increase in real estate value by over 100% during the last 12 years. Meaning that just by buying a home at the right place and at the right time during a crisis, can accidentally take you from a middle class level of wealth to a millionaire level of wealth. But many people also began building real estate empires during the 2008 financial crisis as well, because many aspiring investors all of a sudden could qualify to purchase their first rental property due to the massive reduction in prices and interest rates. And there has been a litany of stories about people becoming real estate moguls because of the 2008 crash. All you really have to do is go onto some real estate forums or listen to podcasts like Bigger Pockets Podcast to hear just how many people became millionaires or even multi-millionaires because of the 2008 crash. So I have covered many of the key industries that will end up turning some people into millionaires, multi-millionaires, or maybe even billionaires. Now I'd like to ask you guys, what are your financial plans for this crisis? And what do you think is going to happen to certain industries during this time? Let me know in the comments down below. We also just hit 150,000 subscribers, so I'd like to thank each and every one of you. And if you liked this video, please leave a like and check out my documentaries playlist if you want to see more videos just like this. So make sure to click on that playlist and I will see you guys in a few seconds.